Should you let water set for 24 to 48 hours before you use it on house plants? That's the question I'm going to answer today, along with some other questions about the quality of the water you use for house plants. So this all started a few minutes ago when I was reading through one of the Facebook groups, and someone asked a pretty simple question. This person said, I was told to use distilled water for my house plants. Is that a good idea? 66 answers came in, and most of the statements in there were wrong. I just couldn't take it anymore. I had to make a video and answer some of these questions. So let's start with the distilled water. Is that good for house plants? And the answer is absolutely not. Distilled water has no minerals in it. If you put that next to a plant root, it actually sucks the nutrients out of the plant. It has no minerals. It has no nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, all these things that plant needs to grow, it doesn't have it. If you water most house plants with distilled water on a regular basis, you'll kill them. Now, there are a few exceptions. Things like sundews, like very, very soft water, so you might get away with it there. But for most house plants, don't use distilled water. All right, so let's ask the question, should you let this tap water sit for 24 hours? One person commented that their mother has been letting water sit for 24 hours for 50 years. And she grew great plants. And now this lady has been doing it for 30 years. She's an experienced gardener. So letting the water sit for 24 hours is beneficial and it works. Yes, it does work. But it doesn't actually do anything for you. There's no benefit. You can take the water right from your tap and use it and it still works. This is a very common argument, and it goes something like, well, my grandmother did it, and my mother did it, and it's got to work, otherwise why would they do it? Well, we've learned a lot of science in the last hundred years, and so we know a lot more today than we knew back then. And a lot of the things that seemed to work back then actually didn't work that well. And in other cases, they just did things which really didn't benefit us. So one person replied, yes, I do that all the time because the toxins evaporate out of it. What toxins are they talking about? Most chemicals, and that's toxins, don't come out of the water with it sitting there. Now there is one exception, and that's chlorine. And people are concerned about too much chlorine in our water harming our plants. Now, it's interesting that chlorine is actually one of these nutrients that plants need, but they want it in very low amounts. Too much chlorine will kill your plant. So the important question is, how much is too much? Well, I looked into that, and it turns out that the chlorine we put in our drinking water is really low compared to the amount that would harm a plant. You don't have to let the water sit to let the chlorine go off because the chlorine is not going to harm your plants anyway. Now, a lot of municipalities use a compound called chloramine instead of chlorine. Chloramine doesn't evaporate, so you can let it sit there for a month. It's still going to have the same amount of chloramine. Now, that's not a concern either because, again, that level of chloramine in drinking water is so low, it doesn't harm plants. So forget about the chlorine. There's no point in letting water sit for your house plant, except possibly to warm up a bit. So if you take it from a cold water tap, let it sit for half an hour to warm up. The plants might appreciate that, but even that isn't necessary. Someone else replied, said, you should boil the water. If you boil the water, you turn it into distilled water. That's complete nonsense. The minerals that are in the water don't come up when you boil it. They stay in the water. In fact, as you're boiling it, you're losing water, which actually concentrates the mineral. It makes it harder. You're never going to make distilled water by boiling it. There's absolutely no benefit to boiling water before you use it on your plants. Then there was a big discussion about tap water. Several people wrote in and said, I just use tap water and it works fine. You should be able to use it too. Well, here's the thing. We all have different tap water. Now, your tap water may be very soft and have very low levels of mineral. It may be acidic or it could be alkaline. My tap water is quite hard. That hardness, the calcium and magnesium that's in that water, those are salts, by the way. Not table salt, but they're salts. Those are not really good for plants. 
Now I can grow a lot of plants and give them tap water and even though it's hard they do just fine. But some plants really don't do well. Now I'm growing streptocarpus and I found that if I give them tap water for three or four months straight, the leaves start going brown. They simply can't take all these minerals in the water. My water is too hard. So I mix it with rainwater, which is very soft. Rainwater has very few nutrients. My tap water has a lot of nutrients. And when I mix them, I get one that's kind of in the middle, which is just right for plants. But the fact that you can use your tap water doesn't mean that somebody else can use their tap water. To know whether you can use tap water for plants, you have to find out what's in your tap water. And your local municipality can tell you that. And if you're on a well, well, just find the municipality that's close to you and get the values for their water. More than likely, it's the same as your water because it's all coming from large aquifers underground. Once you have some idea of how hard it is and what the pH is, then you can decide how good is it for plants. Now, rainwater is almost always good for plants, but there is a problem with rainwater. There aren't enough nutrients in it. So rainwater is great, but you have to add in the fertilizer and you have to add in calcium and magnesium, something we call the CalMag because it doesn't generally come with most fertilizer. Now you can get a lot more information on water and the chemistries and salts and so on from my blog, gardenmist.com. Or you can come to my Facebook group called Garden Fundamentals. And if you had asked the question about distilled water there, you would have got the right answer. Thank you very much for watching. Here's another video with other tips on watering houseplants. Happy gardening.